and listening centers you in the world, right? If you mm, if you sure. watch, if you look at the world, you stand on the edge of it. And if you listen to the world, you're suddenly you you, you hear everything around you. It's, mm. uh, it's 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 quite beautiful. Hey everyone, I'm McKeegan Voice, the host of For the Record, a conversation series presented by Grey Matter, where we talk to music heads about their stories and the music that makes them. Today we're speaking with Martin Walraven, who operates at the intersection of music, technology, communities, and education. He wears many different hats, from co-CEO at Symphony.Live to co-creator of the experiment in scene building, Wild Awake, to teaching at the University of Utrecht, to being co-project lead for the Water and Music Academy. If you want to follow his thinking, the best place to do that is Music X the excellent newsletter he co-edits. Hey, Martin, it's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, I always enjoy our conversations, and we've had quite a few at this point, but I I feel determined to learn things about you that I don't yet know. <laughs> so ah, gonna... <laughs> let's see how you get on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so I'm going to start at the beginning, the very beginning, and, and would love to hear just uh, you know about about your origins a little bit, where you're from, and specifically where your relation, where, how, when your relationship with music started. When does your relationship with music start? Mm -hmm. I know you you wrote this right in the invite, the the calendar invite as well. That mm -hmm. that this is kind of where you start, mm -hmm. um, and it it like th th that question. It always reminds me of. Um, uh, some research I did in my PhD, um, which was about, you know, I, I went to an archive where they have a bunch of working class autobiographies, um, all written in like the very late or sort of early ish 20th century. So very late 19th century, early 20th century. Mm -hmm. Um, and it struck me that most of these people's first recollection recollection was something to do with sound, hmm. right? So it was a mother singing or a father singing or it was the sound of like um uh, footsteps on cobbled stones uh, you know stuff stuff with sound um so I, I guess the first sort of active memory um that i kind of have of music is um also something similar right it's this it's this music that your that your parents bring to the table um and then at some point, you know, you start to develop or you think you start to develop your own taste, but actually you're just listening to top 40 music. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, there's this, you know, kind of greatest hit album from 1993. Um, and whenever I hear music from that record, <laughs> hmm. I know it's from 1993. Huh. <laughs> um, and all of this is kind of making a comeback now in terms of its happy hardcore nature. Um, so that's that's sort of when I felt that I was sort of making my own making my own music choices, um, but I wasn't really yet. Um, and then, um, uh, to kind of rail against that happy hardcore ish nature and um, the rise of uh, uh, Gabber in the Netherlands, um, I became more alternative. I started skating, um, yeah. listening to like No Effects and Green Day and offspring and that sort of stuff mm -hmm. um and uh, but i also liked hardcore i also like techno so it's uh that's sort of where where it all kind of began to like oh i'm not one of these things i like techno but i also like nine inch nails i like mm -hmm. i like all of these things and that's mm -hmm. you know people might not understand it necessarily because they think they're only this one particular thing right um but that's uh, yeah that's how it kind of started blending all together in, into this mesh of genres and I was just into music. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because, you know, because identity is, you know, very close association with music. So when you, you know, you're listening to nine inch nails and like you see kind of like the, the industrial aesthetic, you know, that surrounds it, but then you also, also like green day, um, you know, in the offspring, you see like the punk aesthetic and the skate, you know, kind of aesthetic that surrounds that. And then you're going to techno and you wonder like how can i reconcile all of these different identities inside myself and actually actually portray them in you know a core here in in 
in you know kind of a coherent way it becomes kind of difficult to do especially you know when you're young yeah yeah and and this was of course in the sort of mid mid to late 90s so um there were not that many subcultures right mm. um so you were either alternative um or you were a a, a, hubber, a gabber a hardcore person um uh, or you were preppy right there were basically three main flavors yeah. um and I, I remember walking down the street of the city i grew up in um in my baggy skater pants with nike Air max which was a gabber thing um and uh, somebody literally came up to me and said you can't do that you can't Wear the baggy pants mm -hmm. with the with the Nike Air Max. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's interesting. I mean, that would never happen, you know, today. And you know, in like the internet era, like it, it just you you know, the more you mash things into each other, the more you know, the more stylish you are. I feel. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so as as you're starting to figure out your, I, actually, first, I'm curious what was on that 1993 greatest hits record. If you remember like some of the tracks it was a lot of uh, kind of two unlimited ace of bass mm -hmm. um there's a song on there called uh mr blue um mm -hmm. mr blue i'm here to stay with you i don't know if that was a hit anywhere but the netherlands but uh, <laughs> that 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 sort of uh that sort of music cool i had to ask um okay cool so your your identities are, are coalescing yeah uh, uh, you're making people angry because <laughs> you're starting to mix them. Um, you know what happened after that? As as you as you continued to mature and ex explore music, um, and yeah, like what what were the next steps? Um, I guess it became more extreme. Um, so it started, you know, veering into much more obscure noise music, free jazz um the kind of stuff where a lot of people would listen to and they would go nah this mm -hmm. isn't for me um mm -hmm. you know bleep bleep that sort of stuff mm -hmm. or really really noisy and loud um yeah i went to uh the mers festival uh once because um there was a performance there by mertzbo and uh, kaiji haino and even though these are all people who go to this specific festival where you know, there's a ton of really noisy stuff, a ton of free jazz, lots of difficult music. Um, and they managed to uh, be so loud that uh, quite a lot of people still left the tent. Mm. <laughs> um, so they, they were still not prepared for that kind of level of uh, of, of noise. Mm. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, mean, I appreciate that. Uh, it, it, you know, it kind of always, you know, kind of brings you back to the question, and I'm sure you've thought about this question a lot. I can't remember if I've asked you this before, but it's, it's, um, you know, the answer to a lot of these questions is kind of like, what are the, what is music? You know, what is the definition of music? What makes it music and not just like pure sound, you know, like where, where is the threshold between the two things? And you have, you know, like the cage inside of like everything we do is music. And then, you know, there are many other definitions. Um, and I'm curious, of course, there's not you know like a right answer to this, but i'm I'm curious how you think about that question. Um, yeah, I mean, it all depends on the context, right? So, mm -hmm. so cage cage is a great example. Um, four, four minutes thirty three seconds makes the context uh, of that piece make sure that anything you hear within that period is music. Mm -hmm. um, is mm -hmm. does that mean that it's always music? No, no probably not. Um, mm -hmm um but you know s sound has all of the properties to um make something music um and we have you know specific rule sets that may allow us to kind of analyze something as music um which are very different here in the west than for example if you go to uh iran or you know uh, southeast asia Mm -hmm. uh, those kinds of uh, very very different cultures from what we're used to here in the West. Um, um, you know, we have ever since the sort of 18th century. This is what music is. This is how we do it. Um, and uh, over there, it's much more about sort of improvisation and making music together and seeing what happens. Um, and it's 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 a totally different 
sort of experience but but both of those things are music and then something like you know bird song also music um you know the 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 rhythm of a of an underground train also music you know a lot of a lot of things can be music um but you have to kind of conceptualize it contextualize it yeah yeah there's yeah i think there's like too many factors to really have you know to have one definition for what music is because it depends on the context you know the intention of the person you know who's actually listening um like if you're not paying attention then you know you're not listening to music either it's not music either um yet there was a a mute put out a comp they had put out a compilation of it's like 20 different artists who are covering 433 mm. like three or four years ago maybe, maybe more than that i don't remember now um but that was such an interesting concept <laughs> is you know taking this his piece and which is already in you know incredibly conceptual in and of itself um and and then iterating on on that for those people who don't know 433 is you know originally written you know by cage and you know the performance notes are for someone to go up to a piano and 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 then they sit there for, for a very specific and, person to go up to the piano it was written for morton feldman right yeah written for morton feldman he'd go up to the piano for four minutes and 33 seconds and that was it wouldn't do anything yeah. well he would open and close the <laughs> right right at the beginning and then the end piano, yeah um and it's it's of, of course kind of you know become enshrined uh as as um this kind of piece around which we orient this question around what what is music and what what isn't it so um yeah I yeah, guess it's a bit like a urinal right it's, 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 it's got the same sort of <laughs> that's modern true. modernized conceptual art uh, yeah. aspects to it yeah. yeah um you know no and you know it's a good point the the regional and cultural differences you know to how we answered that you know that question as well you know i remember being in school and and i was studying you know studying music and i was taking music theory classes which were rooted in like classical opera and things like that and then at the same time i was i was part of the african drum ensemble which was like <laughs> music was not you know was not written down there would there would like be a signal from the drum lead who would do something yeah. would pay attention it's like okay now i do this thing um and you know it's completely felt and it's like in the body whereas like yeah. I, you know, I think a lot of the western music has like become really really intellectualized um you know for better or for worse uh but anyhow <laughs> well i mean it's 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 all about sort of well anyway the, a lot of the music that i like is about sort of pushing boundaries right mm. so you you think about you think about the question what is music and then you can think about like oh but i'm also listening to this what the hell is this white <laughs> noise or pink noise that i'm listening to you know yeah. mm -hmm. or someone is just screaming um and and then at the same time you know you have composers like gage or luigi nono and um you know a lot of people who kind of dabble with 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 silence um and um you know if you think about that from a more western classical music perspective there's 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 arvo Pert and uh mm -hmm. ben Rechke and, and a lot of those people who kind of used their their music in that sort of later 20th century period to kind of reconceptualize spirituality and the way they dealt with that mm. um and and a lot of that is about silence um and i think silence is just as interesting as noise in that respect mm. um you know, 433 is a silent piece, but it's not silent because there's always sound around. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and that that sound that starts from sort of within us, right? So we have our heartbeat. Right. Um, we have the the blood coursing through our veins. We have the, our nervous system. So I don't, I don't know if you've ever been in an anechoic chamber, but um, <laughs> it was it was a very formative for John Cage. And you mm -hmm. hear those. You hear a high pitched sound and a low pitched sound. And, uh, the high pitch sound is your nervous system, and the low pitch sound is your blood coursing through um, through your veins, um, and that suddenly becomes audible. And that low pitch sound is often pitched, um, or is a pitch that is very similar to to the cello. 
which is why mm. we love the cello so much. Which mm. is probably why people loved Game of Thrones so much because I had the cello in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the reason. <laughs> that is just it. Yeah. <laughs> uh I didn't know that actually. Um no, that's really interesting. I, I think there's a yeah there's a room in minnesota actually which means i should have you know i should have been just like mm -hmm. the quietest place on earth yeah uh, yeah although it's and but the thing is it's not quiet right you well you right. hear yourself right right but it's like you know i guess the conditions of yeah. it are are quieter than anywhere else and i've been meaning to go and they say that like you know no one has been able to be in the room for longer than an hour i think is yeah it's, it does it does things with you apparently yeah so so i'm really i'm really you know quite curious to go try that um but but haven't yet but i yeah i mean i was also thinking you know i was also uh i was also thinking about brian eno and like his definition of ambient music mm -hmm. when you were talking and this kind of this threshold of threshold of attention um and you know and i think you know brian eno's his approach to to ambient music, what he defined it as, as ambient music was kind of a, you know, response to Muzak and like typical elevator music, or like typical airport music, you know, his, the like, you know, his big album music for airports, of course, mm -hmm. was, you know, for the Colm airport, I think initially, where he was just like really frustrated by the sounds that were there, maybe Munich. Um, uh, but, you know, the idea that that it should be something that um oh man I need to look it up because i'm gonna butcher it <laughs> but, you know you know something that you can that's as easy to pay attention to as it is to ignore it's yeah you know along those lines and 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 that's a really interesting you know intention is as well when you when you as the composer like i'm creating the conditions for you, you know you to be able to maintain this threshold and come in and out um and then you as as the listener uh you know have it's your prerogative to like decide at which points you want to come in and i, and I listen to these records all the time because they're also great for writing <laughs> yeah. yeah they're great for having on while yeah. doing something else right yeah, yeah. And, yeah. indeed it's the, it's, the, it's the ultimate lean back uh experience it it is it is and that of course like that style that sort of mood based music of course has become become incredibly popular during the streaming mm -hmm. era which um encourages you know that kind of lean back experience but anyhow um well yeah i mean there's there's i don't know there's a there's a theory that you could posit that uh you know mu music the, the, that music for airports um you know is a start of something that has now become the standard filter of our world, right? It's a, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Um, it, yeah, it's interesting though because it's not you. You know, Eno was like the first person to ever do that with music. Of course, you know there was like elevator music as well, but um, yeah. And I just heard the story for like why it's called elevator music uh, for the first time. Apparently, it was back when. Uh, you know when elevators were still operated you know by elevator operators um and then there was like a strike or something and they stopped working and then people who lived in buildings they like tried to manage you know, the elevators themselves um and it was still kind of dangerous and you know still kind of complicated and like occasionally someone would would get you know cut in half or like decapitated from you know operating the elevator um so when they did you know come back and like upgraded the elevator and made it more available more accessible um you know for people to operate themselves people were concerned um so you know so they piped in this music to the telephone lines that would make people feel calmer um which is a story i hadn't heard before but I thought yeah in case you didn't know it's, it. <laughs> it's 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 um there's a lot about sort of um there's a lot there about soundscapes and how they mm -hmm. kind of influence influence our lives um usually without us really knowing it um mostly in a very sort of easygoing way but sometimes in a quite scary way 
mm-hmm. you know when you're thinking of like these super high pitched sounds to keep youths away from certain areas and right um you know there's also sonic cannons and you know there's there's quite <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, awful ways that sound is being is being used as well um, as a as a corrective device, etc. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot there about about soundscapes and how they kind of influence our everyday lives. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. You know, ears are interesting because you know you can't cl- close them the way you can with with eyes. You know. Correct. Yeah. They don't, they don't have lids, so. Well, and 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 listening centers you in the world, right? If you. If you sure. watch, if you look at the world, you stand on the edge of it. And if you listen to the world, you're suddenly you 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 hear everything around you. It's mm. uh, it's 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 quite beautiful. <laughs> that is beautiful. Yeah, uh, I like that. Um, well, and actually, that seems like a good segue into uh, you know the music that that you're listening to, that you, that you listen to, um, and would be curious. To, to begin uh, to understand how you discover music these days? Um, I have recently become quite, um, but recently, I mean, in the like the last two years or so, um, I've become really reliant on curators. Hmm. Um, so I, I try to follow certain people and thankfully some of them have these really great broadcast channels <laughs> so that it's easy to kind of you know get their recommendations um mm-hmm. and, and live with them um there's a lot uh, that 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 people kind of you know friends tell you to listen to um but yeah it's it's i think there's a big there's a big role for curators at the moment um as a kind of counterweight to all the algorithmic recommendations where well you know how an algorithm works it feeds you more of the same in the end right mm-hmm. um and um what happens when um somebody sort of digs through a lot of that music and recommends you something then you go like oh right i i trust you i i like your style i like your taste and um, i'm going to listen to that as well and then usually you know you, you end up liking it mm-hmm. um, so yeah, there's a lot of human human curation that I'm really into. Do you uh, you know? Could you name a couple of those human curators? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, of course. Um, okay. So one one of them is uh, Marianne Hobbs, who is a, uh-huh. a BBC Radio Six DJ. Um, she was uh, one of the DJs who popularized uh, dubstep in the mid two thousands. Um, she's a, an overall wonderful human being um and uh, her show she t- up until the end of last year she did a uh, an hour long uh weekly recommend show uh, on BBC Radio 6 but that that's been canceled or been replaced by a different style um so if you want to catch what she's listening to you have to kind of listen to her daily radio show um which starts at 11:30 a.m. my time so 10:30 a.m. uk time okay calculate it if you're somewhere else in the world <laughs> um and um another one is um uh opium hum mm-hmm. uh, uh who has a telegram channel called uh hyper real radio um and which is great for um my more electronic music uh tendencies Mm. um and yeah he's 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 a he's a fantastic uh fantastic curator and i'm super happy that he's doing that he also started a a new radio show um which he released on soundcloud which is also called hyper real radio um just released in one this week which i think was the fifth one now um yeah and i should should end up in berlin or leipzig at one of his parties at some point in my life but i haven't managed to yet cool um yeah, I uh, I'm familiar with Opium Hum, but not with Hyper Real Radio. So I need to I need to tune into. That. I'll I'll drop you the Telegram link and you Thank can you. join the uh, join the gang. <laughs> this it's interesting though because it's like they have Hyper Real Radio, which is just like the broadcast channel. Every time you recommend something, which is almost on a daily basis, it ends up in that Telegram channel, and then there's community. Um, 
even though there's I don't know how many people, like a hundred people in there. Um, it's not it's not very lively in terms of like people start to talk about the music, which I'm always struck by because we all like a pretty specific niche in the music world. Mm -hmm. Um do we have plenty of other people to talk to about it? Or you know, do we <laughs> yeah. just kind of tend to consume yeah. uh, whatever he feeds us? Yeah. Yeah. I know it's an interesting um yeah, I mean, it's, that's you know been something that that we've been observing, you know, via the Create Coalition as well, and just seeing like how people engage with music, how people interact with music, and you know, occasionally, I think if you find the right connective tissue, you know, that triggers a memory, you know, mm -hmm. or something in somebody, then you can really get into you know a really nice conversation that just goes back and forth, music, 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 music. I saw this then, oh yeah, I heard this when I was a kid. Yeah, I love this. This makes me remember this. And 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 like when you can trigger that, it's you know really beautiful. But it's 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 kind of hard to predict when that's going to happen. You know, you don't know when you're going to trigger that thing. Yeah, I'm doing a cool thing with um, a guy called Andrew Andrew McCluskey. He has a a, a, a startup. I think you can still call it Music Two. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. I know Andrew. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're doing is a collaborative playlist. So he adds a song, I add a song, he adds a song, I add a song, and you kind of feed off each other. Um, uh, and I, I, I really enjoy doing that. Um, should do that with more people. It's like you do that naturally with some friends, right? It's like you, mm -hmm. you share music together, or you know, you, you, or even Spotify just tells you like, hey, we've made this collaborative playlist with with yeah. you and <laughs> for you and your friend. Um, but uh, to do it intentionally like that and to kind of think about why you're adding a track after another one mm -hmm. um i don't know it adds a lot of value yeah i agree um you know a good friend of mine and i we we had a radio you know show in college together and we did it for three years and it was amazing it was you know just like that back and forth back and forth you know, just playing off of each other um yeah, I guess it, and it's 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 also you see that you know like a B two B, you know like if you go to a dance party, you know if you go to a rave or something and see, like I've been to a couple really amazing B two B sets and just like really seeing you know these DJs play off each other. Yeah, it's, um, it's wonderful when that happens. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty cool. Um, cool. Okay, here's the next question for you. <laughs> uh. If you remember, what what is the first album that you ever purchased, and then what is what is the most recent? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> um, the first album I ever bought was um, the uh, first record by Two Unlimited. Oh, nice! Yeah, well, I don't know about that, but yeah, well. <laughs> the first album I bought with my own money, um, mm -hmm. I was super happy and proud, um, and uh, uh, um, I mean, I was in. I was I was eleven, um, so I was still in primary school, mm -hmm. um, and I, I even brought it to school to to tell the rest of the class that I, mm -hmm. I bought the album. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, you were proud in the moment. I, you know, very very proud of the moment. It shouldn't yeah. be, should be no shame. <laughs> My um, favorite track from that record is still Maximum Overdrive. Nice. If anybody is interested. <laughs> <laughs> um and then what is what is the most recent album that you purchased um i should probably check on bandcamp which one it is because that's usually where i buy my albums nowadays but um i think it's jasmine wood jasmine. um yeah she just released a record i think on ad 93 um, which is an amazing label um and she um yeah, I've been totally struck by this record. I thought it sounded really, really amazing. And then I read about it and I learned that um, all the sounds are just a reverb of piano notes. Wow. <laughs> so um, she she That's apparently cool. went to Ireland and um, uh, saw all these sort of abandoned churches. Hmm. Um, and in one of these churches, she put an old piano um, and recorded some music um and and she then made a record just with the, like the reverb on the notes not wow. the actual like i'm touching the piano note but what comes at the end wow that's incredible see that's the that's the 
you know, that's the kind of context that you need to like really enrich the music. If you just, I mean, I haven't heard the music. I'm sure it's, you know, it's really interesting. You'd like ambient stuff, so you'll love it. <laughs> cool. Um, but I mean, that concept is like, you know, it's like going to a museum. It's, you know, or like experiencing 433 without having any idea what's going on, you know, without having, having, having any context. Once you do have the context, it truly enriches the experience. And then without it, you know more sound right well exactly you you listen differently right with knowledge that's why we, we yeah i don't know people we're all humans right we're not like super good at understanding the complexity of the world we tend to kind of simplify everything which mm. is why we love stories mm. because the story allows us to like oh here's the here's the way that i can explain how this works or yeah. you know how this how, how i feel about this um and um uh, and because of that when we know the story it adds this layer of like understanding feeling all of those mm -hmm. kinds of things it, it adds it onto it um and especially with music which already does a lot of emotional stuff with us um yeah that's that's very powerful yeah yeah absolutely um cool okay who are three artists of note that you heard for the first time in the past year in the past year oh ish. gosh ish okay um um okay the first one that comes to mind is ice boy violet who ice i boy violet ice boy violet from manchester in the uk um who okay. i I found out about through uh, this wonderful person called Marianne Hobbs that I just mentioned. <laughs> um, it's, I don't know how to describe this music. Um, it could be described as something that stems from hip hop, um, mm. but is very much um, abstracted. Um, and it's wonderful. Mm. Um, and then who else am i gonna well, what else am i gonna do i'm just gonna open up this playlist yeah that i made or not a playlist a list that i made for 2023 um and seeing who i learned about who was new um oh yes of course that was really good um i Last year, I discovered MC Yala, who released an album on uh, Niega Niega tapes. Um, cool. And, um, East Africa, I think maybe Tanzania, if I remember correctly. Um, she's a rapper, um, and she raps sort of in multiple languages. Um, the music is great. Um, her style is fantastic. Um, I listen to it a lot. Um, especially when I need to be energized a little bit. Mm. Um, and then what did I discover last year? Um, oh yeah, there's an artist I discovered. Um, Jalen Ngonda. Can you spell that for me? J-A-L-E-N. Oh, Jalen. Jalen and Gonda, so N G O N D A. Um, okay. Beautiful singer, um, beautiful music, um, kind of R and B style. Uh, but yeah, that that was a that was a great discovery. Cool. Um, is is there any chance? That I'm I'm wondering if maybe you shared an MCL track via Music X. At some oh point. yeah yeah i definitely did okay that's probably yeah. where i've where i've heard of her before, from then yeah um cool okay here's you know here's the big one um the one that everyone everyone gets mad at me <laughs> when i ask <laughs> uh you're you're going to uh to a desert island and you get to bring three records with you yeah what are they um Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I would probably bring um, Catherine Joseph, for those who are wronged, from 
2022, which was one of the most beautiful albums I've ever heard in my life. Wow. Um, if I am feeling somewhat despondent and emotional and I want to kind of lay into that feeling and lean into that feeling um i, I listen to that record preferably mm -hmm. on my headphones uh they did a wonderful thing in the production where they where they put her vocals back and um it's got such a beautiful effect i think more people should have the courage to do that mm -hmm. um then i would need to bring something by nine inch nails nice um probably the downward spiral good choice um and then uh i would like to dance to something as well <laughs> <laughs> you know on the on the beach of this deserted island mm -hmm. um with some turtles or something i don't know <laughs> um uh, have you seen the red turtle the That's red the, the red the... turtle no i haven't ah it's nice. Um, which one, though? It has to be an album, or can it also be some kind of mix? Is there? It could be, so it could be a mix. You wouldn't be the first one to stretch, stretch, <laughs> to stretch rules. The, <laughs> stretch the rules. Um, so there's a there's a DJ called Burke um, who makes these wonderful mixes for each season. I could pick one of them um there's also this uh mix by aurora halal that i often mm. go back to um so let's go for that one okay the aurora halal one yeah yeah cool do you know the name of the mix um i think it's at deck mantle festival but i'm okay. not 100 percent sure off the top of my head okay if you can find it, I would love I, to listen. I will. I will find it. Yeah, um, somewhere on SoundCloud. And we also archive all of all of these things for connective purposes in the future. So. Oh, that's true, right? Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. I will. I will definitely dig it up and share it. Cool. Thank you. Um. Cool. You did it. I hope it I wasn't too it. <laughs> Not at all. I really enjoyed it. I'm just going to see if it's not in my somewhere in my library. And yeah, while you're looking for that, for you know, folks out in the world who want to get involved or pay attention to what you're doing, where is the best place for them to do that? Ah, uh, definitely subscribe to Music X, um, musicx. Email. It's a Substack, so you can also find it on Substack. Um, that would be the place I am uh, trying to stay active on LinkedIn as one of the last sort of social media to still have my attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I've, I've lost it with, with Twitter as well now. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's probably it. And, uh, you know, you can always uh, email or something like that. <laughs> okay, cool. Sounds good. Um, and last quick question for you, now that you've, well, especially since you have actually been the answer to this question twice, um, now that you've been on For the Record, who is another music head in your world that we should have on the show? Oh, what a nice question. Um, t -t 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 um, I would like to recommend Tristra New Year Jaeger. Do you know her? I don't know her, but okay. but I've read her writing and I'm yeah. a big fan of the way she thinks. Yeah, so she's she's very cool. She sometimes uh does these takeovers for Music X, which are always excellent. Mm -hmm. Um and I think she'd be great for this. Cool. Yeah. All right. Also also takes you out of the you know the little web three world a little bit. So uh... that's that's yeah that's fine. <laughs> I leave it. I leave it as as whenever I get the chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's fun to pop in and out of that world. Definitely. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, that's all we've got. Thank you so much, Barton. I really appreciate you being here. You know, your time, thoughts, energy. I always enjoy our conversations. 
thanks for having me Absolutely. let's make a playlist together let's let's do it i'm down <laughs> <laughs> cool thanks mate all right man take care all right that's a wrap on another episode of for the record a conversation series with all manner of music heads about their stories and the music that makes them it's a production of gray matter and a new Crate Coalition experiment in building connective listening graphs. We stamp every music mention you heard here. That means every artist, every venue, every label, every radio station, every curator, every human being involved in the music process. And in the background, we're mapping these names to form those yet unseen connective threads between people. Want to get involved? You can check out our website at graymatter.fm or come hang out in the Crate Coalition Discord. Hope to see you there and see you in the next episode of For the Record. Take care.